Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Transportation of lightly armed personnel for raids and recovery of reconnaissance squads from foreign vessels or offshore facilities is a common practice for the military. For this purpose, they often utilize what they usually call the Zodiac. A versatile stealth craft designed by the boat manufacturer Zodiac Milpro, the Futura Commando 470, also known as the FC-470 Combat Rubber Reconnaissance Craft, the CRRC, is an inflatable boat used for various forms of transportation by multiple branches of the military. So right, right now, uh, since all the trucks got here, we offloaded the trucks, currently building the boats. So uh, making sure that we can put the, you know, put the deck plates in, blow them up, make sure they're uh, seaworthy, put the engines on. Inflated in minutes simply by a foot pump, compressor, or CO2 tank, the CRRC can carry a variety of things, such as raiding parties or reconnaissance teams. Thanks to its eight different air chambers, a single leak in the craft will not cause it to sink. Known for its lightweight and compact size while being stowed, it can be launched from various aircraft, submarines, and ships. The goal is to learn to quickly and efficiently deploy in and out of the deck of the different ships. Generally, the personnel responsible for maintaining and conducting the boat is known as the coxswain. Besides the safe operation of the boat, the coxswain also manages the recovery of the boat and its associated components and equipment. The U.S. Navy and the Marine Corps work hand-in-hand -hand with various operations and exercises at sea. A notable joint exercise performed annually by both branches is Operation Dawn Blitz. They are required to formulate and execute an amphibious assault aboard and on the well deck of an amphibious transport dock. These docks are amphibious warships, which transport troops and equipment across the sea. So when we look at the uh, Navy Marine Corps team and, and what does that mean, it means the Navy being able to load on a lot of big equipment in order to get us where we need to get in order to conduct our mission. During the exercise, troops focus on the development of operations. The environment devised for this training is scenario driven. providing an opportunity to improve Naval Corps competencies while recognizing threatful environments on land and sea, and establishing advanced expeditionary bases. During the exercise, Marines may work with high-mobility artillery rocket systems, one of the many systems an amphibious transport dock can store. Also known as HIMARS, these weapon systems are combat proven and have accumulated more than 2 million operating hours, according to Lockheed Martin. The company states that these vehicles have a shoot and scoot capability, making it easier for crews to stay alive in dangerous areas.
A HIMARS is a rocket launcher mounted on a truck, allowing troops to fire rockets quickly. The most recent system now includes an armored cab, increasing protection for military personnel inside. According to the United States Army, these weapon systems were created to support joint early and forced expeditionary operations with high-volume destructive, suppressive, and counter-battery fires. When it's being transported to shore from an amphibious transport dock, it will likely be on a landing craft air cushion, or LCAC. These craft are used to transport weapons, equipment and more from ship to shore and across beaches, as performed here by the sailors from Assault Craft Unit 5. However, like so many other important crafts, drills are an important aspect of using an LCAC. One of these drills may include loading rehearsals performed by several Marines and Navy sailors. The crew usually operates with a crew of five sailors who work to maneuver the craft in a variety of different environments while at sea. Not just used for land and sea vehicles, an amphibious transport dock can also be used as a landing pad for the likes of a CH-53. These heavy lift helicopters are frequent flyers when it comes to shipboarding operations. According to designer Lockheed Martin, the helicopters are designed to exacting standards of the U.S. Marine Corps and will serve as its critical land and sea-based logistics connector. The original CH-53s were designed by Sikorsky Aircraft and were officially delivered in 1966 to replace the HR-2S helicopters. Used as part of the Vietnam War, the CH-53D first took off in January of 1969 as the military continued to ask Sikorsky for more power and improvements upon the previous helicopter designs. In March of 1974, the CH-53 was further upgraded to its E-model, the Super Stallion. A third engine and a seventh blade to the main rotor were added to make the helicopter more powerful. Some days that I'm flying, First things that I do, I'm going to check out all my flight gear and pre-flight it accordingly, make sure all my stuff is good to go. After that, I'm going to come up to the aircraft, I'm going to give it a once-over and ensure that it's safe for flight. However, the newest model of the helicopter advances the CH-53 even further. The CH-53K King Stallion has new engines, composite rotor blades, and a wider aircraft cabin. The helicopter is designed to transport more cargo or troops with fewer trips than its previous models, as well as the option of carrying multi-wheeled vehicles. These helicopters have the ability to sling load, 
which is the act of cargo being carried beneath the helicopter. These are usually attached to what's called a swivel and a lead line. United States Marines, such as those with the Marine Aviation, Weapons and Tactics Squadron 1 and the 1st Transport Support Battalion, 1st Marine Logistics Group, may conduct instruction courses on sling loading. The CH-53K has a 46,000 pound capacity, allowing it to transport a wide variety of vehicles over land or sea. It could carry twice as much as its former CH-53 models. This allowed for faster and safer completion of missions. Like any vehicle, maintenance is an important part of the CH-53's daily life. Maintenance not only keeps the helicopter in working order, but can also continue to increase the aircraft's lifespan. Though the CH-53K King Stallion is designed to be low maintenance, U.S. Marines with the Marine Heavy Lifting Helicopter Squadron may still decide to take a look at it. Annual maintenance is commonplace for any helicopter that is frequently flown. This could be anything from maintenance on the controls, technology, or other parts of the helicopter. Typically, helicopters are often checked more often than planes due to the extra fatigue placed on the helicopter while flying. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.